You're live. Amen. We'd like to welcome everyone here tonight, everyone that's listening across on the uh, live screen that we are streaming out tonight. We'd like to welcome you here. We've got uh, so, some people here today, tonight, and uh, I know it's a short notice, but you know, God, God is on all the time. We don't have to ask Him to tune in. He is always tuned in. You know what I really want to stress tonight as as we stand here together, there is such a unity going on across the body, and I and I want everybody to and I pray that everybody has the ear to hear what the Lord is saying in this hour and in this day that we're in. You know, not everyone today has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. And uh, I uh, I'm I'm so appreciated of uh been with joined to a group of people that is like-minded and like-hearted and has truly got their heart set for the Lord to hear because I think I'm in the midst of a people that is hungry for what God is doing not just doing doing what we want to do but really truly doing what he's desiring to doing you know there's a there's a real true word that is coming out of the heavens right now a word a fresh word a word that I've never heard before. And uh, it's coming daily as the Lord begins to speak to our hearts. We've, uh, we've not been this way before. So it's real crucial for us to really hear, really be in tune with the Lord. You know, I know there isn't one of us here that can't go and do a meeting. It's like I said the last time I was in Tennessee, you know, there, I, I'm with a group of people that's preached all their lives. We've preached almost our entire lives. We can, we can pull a sermon out of a hat. I mean, if we have to, we can. But that's not what it's about today. We're earning a new thing with God where it's not just about a sermon. We're, we're beginning a walk with God that we've never been this way before. And that's the reason we have to be really in tune with what God's saying and what He's doing. And I think God is joining that together across the land. I think there's a people that's got a true hunger for God that hadn't had it in a long, long time. And I and I am so proud to be a part of that. You know, I uh I hear the I hear the word of the Lord all the time saying to me, you know, be real sensitive of what's going on. I was uh, I was walking up Jackson Mountain the other day and I walk up to the local people here, everybody knows what Jackson Mountain is. It's a hard pool. And uh, sometimes you just got to put your head down and go up it because it's such a hard pool. It's a, it's a hard pull all the way to the top. And sometimes I get so busy about walking, I'm not paying attention, and I got my head buried down. And I think that's what we do sometimes in our walk with God. We got our head buried down so deep and, and things going on in the world and around us that we don't see really what God's doing. And all of a sudden, God said, raise up your eyes and look around. And I looked around, and I'd never seen the dogwoods so pretty as they were. I mean, I, the dogwoods bloomed this year. If y'all don't know, dogwoods usually don't bloom all at the same time. But they bloomed all at the same time. They was in full bloom. And it was like snow throughout the woods, you know, and it was so beautiful. And the, and, and the Lord said, you know, you'll miss all this beauty being bogged down and stuff so much. You know, and that's what I'm hearing the Lord say. You know, we're so busy about, because it's a busy world. You know, we got COVID going on, pandemics everywhere, people racing, people dying. I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a chaos world. But I'm telling you something, there's a God that has the an answer to everything that we're going through. And we're not going through nothing except what God has allowed and it's for a purpose and it's for a reason. And I thank God to be a part of it. Amen? Amen. Me and Gary, we, uh, we've, uh, we've known each other a long, long time. Really good friends. We talk a lot. We talk almost daily of, of things that we feel like the Lord is doing in our lives. And it's good to have a friend. You know, you, you have a lot of acquaintances, but it's good to have a friend. What was it Abraham said? You know, God called him his friend. That's, that's a big deal to me. Clifton's my whole life. 
He's my friend, you know? And I have so I have few people around my lives that I call friend. They're my friends, you know? Bob Taranjo, I don't know if sometimes he's my friend or my enemy, but no, no, Bob is my friend. <laughs> and I love him dearly. But we also have some other people that's not in the ministry that, that what we call in our ministry circle that's our friends. This couple right here is my friend. They'll travel many, many miles to come and hear us. I mean many miles. They're our friends. Amen? And I'm proud of that. I am really proud of that. I'm honored. As a matter of fact, I'm listening. I know there's several people out there, Don Janai and his people up there in Canada. You know, they're, they're, they're people that we hold great high esteem. And the, the Georgia girls, I, I don't, I don't like to mention them. There, there are Georgia girls. They, everywhere we go, they'll come. And, and I take a shout out to them. And, you know, by no means I, I want to miss anybody, but to all of the people that listens and, and takes their time out of their busy, busy schedule to listen to us speak, I'm honored. I am truly honored. And, and I, I want to speak something to you tonight. I don't know if I'm going to do it right now. I have a, just a little bit of a word I want to share with you. I'm going to let Gary come and sing and do what he wants to do. Uh, I wish I could sing with him, but y'all would, uh, I would probably end some friendships if I'd sing tonight. So I don't want to do that. I'll stay in the order that God has me in, and it's not singing. My, my wife says, Dennis, don't sing. <laughs> so, but my wife and my daughter does sing, and they, they sing beautifully. And uh, I know the Lord's going to move them into that area because me and Gary's really been praying about that. Amen. Thank you all. Yeah. But anyway, it's an honor to be here before you tonight for all the people that's listening. Uh, Sabrina said something. She was going to try to share this on the, the House of the Lord page. I hope she's able to do that. I know she can. She's tuning in. Great shout to them. They're a great strength in our lives. Sabrina and Russ Carter, I don't know. I'm sure all of y'all know them, but they really take care of us. And we need somebody taking care of us. I probably need things with us tonight. I really feel in my spirit that God called this assembly and uh, has something to say to us. So let's keep our ears open. Amen? And that's that. Here's Gary. I think I got enough cord. Hey Amen. Let's just worship the Lord tonight. It's so good to be here, Brother Clifton. I so appreciate the opportunity. Amen. Do I need to get that closer? We just want to sing a chorus or two to worship and come together. Amen. You got me untied. I'm free at last. I won't go any further than that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why don't we all stand? Amen. Let's just worship the Lord. This is just a worship course. Hope my voice holds out, Dennis. <laughs> For thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above, O God. For Thou, O Lord, You're so high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above. Oh God, and we exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, oh Lord. We exalt Thee, we exalt Thee, O oh Lord, 
for thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all God. And thou, O oh Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above all gods. And we Hallelujah, 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 we bless your name, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, we bless you, Lord, hallelujah, mm, let the temple be filled with His glory, and let your courts be filled with His praise, and let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies for Zion. Rejoices again. So let your temple be filled with his glory, and let your courts be filled with his praise, and let us worship the Lord in the holy. Of holies for Zion rejoices again. Oh, we got to sing it again. Oh, let your temple be filled with his glory. Oh, let your course be filled with his praise. And let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies for Zion rejoices again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, let your temple be filled with his glory and let your courts be filled with his praise and let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies for Zion rejoices again. One more time. Hallelujah. Oh, let your temple be filled with his glory. Hallelujah, and let your courts be filled with His praise. And let us worship the Lord in the holy of holies, for Zion rejoices again. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
God is good. Do I need this thing? I got to have this thing. So, so, okay, so so if I walk away from it, it's for your ears only. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, it's good to be here. Amen. And uh, I appreciate everything that God's doing. I I, uh, I tell you, God's doing some great things. And, um, you know, as we were... As we were, <coughs> Dennis was talking a few minutes ago, I heard the Lord say something. Uh, it was kind of interesting. I never thought of it this way before, but, and I don't know that, that this is what I'm going to even talk about, but if you want to, you can turn with me to the book of Joel chapter two, and maybe I'll get there. <laughs> uh, there's no guarantee tonight, but, <laughs> but I was just thinking as the Lord began to reveal to me, he said, every time, and you can look through the scriptures, every time that God's people stood on the verge of the change of an order, there was a major shakeup. Things that you used to do or know or be did not apply anymore. Everything was different. Uh, my mind began to go to when the children of Israel for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness and, and, and I didn't want to start right here, but I'll will anyway. Uh, they knew the trail. Moses especially knew the trails in the, in the back desert area. He he'd spent 40 years there before he went to the Pharaoh and got God's people re released. So he knew the trails and the, 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 the roads and everything back there. Uh, but when it came time to cross over into the promised land, things changed. There was a fresh new word that, uh, first of all, was not to everybody. If you wonder why you're hearing something and nobody else seems to hear it, it's because God's changing your order. Amen? And it doesn't matter how good of a communicator you might think yourself to be, you cannot speak that language of yesterday. God is doing something fresh with His high priestly order. That's all I know how to put it right now. But the Bible said when they got ready to cross Jordan, now they, they, they'd all heard about the promised land. They'd all heard they were God's chosen. They'd heard all these things their whole lives. But now the Bible said they're spread out along the banks of the river Jordan, and because they're spread out there, uh, the word of the Lord came to Joshua, and he said, you tell them that bear the ark. Not to everybody. And the Lord spoke this to me years ago. He said, it's not good enough to be a priest anymore. Being a priest, it, 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 you say, well, I'm a priest of the Lord. That's not, then this word's not for you. It's only for those that are carrying the burden of this thing. The ark, the manifested glory. This word says, you tell them that bear the ark, put their feet into Jordan. Walk where nobody else has walked. You got to do something nobody else has done. Jordan, the Bible said, overflowed its banks at this time of the, uh, of the year, meaning that it says, actually says at this time of harvest, which meant that death overflowed its banks and everybody's terrified of death. But God says, you priest of the Lord that are carrying this ark, if you'll step where nobody else has stepped, I'll do something that nobody else can do. You're going to walk into some areas and please understand something. What we do is not for us. It's for everybody else. I'm getting ahead of myself. I got to back up here a minute. The Lord began to quicken this to me, and and, and you can do whatever you want to with with this. As as Dennis was talking, this just hit my spirit so powerful. When God got ready to change the order, and I'm going back to when Moses was born, and also when Jesus was born. When God got ready to change the order and bring deliverance, that that was the change of the order it was to bring a deliverance. God doesn't change the order because He's bored. He doesn't change things in your life because he's got nothing else better to mess with you. There's a purpose in everything he does, Brother Clifton. There's a purpose in everything. No matter who he sends into your life or who he takes out of your life, God has a purpose in it that we may or may not ever know, but it doesn't matter. And so here we find that the children of Israel, 
all through, there was over 400 years, <coughs> they had been in Egyptian bondage. They had, they had raised generations in bondage. These people knew nothing but bondage. Sound like church folks, don't it? They knew nothing but bondage. They knew nothing but what their forebears had told them. The Bible said there were graves in Egypt because they had lived and died knowing nothing but bondage. But God said, <coughs> excuse me, when the, when the Pharaoh took the straw out of the bricks, they began to cry out in earnest for a change. And I see a priestly order in this hour that they're seriously crying out for change. We're tired of the same old, same old. We're tired of just coming to church and having a little bit of a feel-good service or a little bit of this or a little bit of that so we can go home and say, boy, we had a time. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of going home and not being changed. I want to be changed into that self-same image that He is. Amen. And, 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 and here's the problem with that. He doesn't just send me stuff that I like to make me change. He changes me where I scream and cry and holler, why me, Lord? But it's for His purpose that these things are done. The Bible said that we know the story of how Moses was born. And here's what the Lord quickened to me and do whatever you want to with it. But the Bible said when Moses, who was the future deliverer of, of the children of Israel in Egyptian bondage, that there came a decree from the Pharaoh to kill all the other sons. All the sons were destroyed because they were after the royal seed of God. And what I'm seeing, Dennis, in this hour is there is a lot of sons that are not seeing the light of day. There's a lot of sons that cannot walk where we're walking. You say, well, you sound like an elitist. I didn't make the rules. God has handpicked in Himself. He said, I chose you before the foundation of the world. You had no say. Can I tell you something? We ain't smart enough to choose God. He did that sovereignly in Himself, the Bible says. And, and so here we find that, that the Pharaoh thinks he's killed all of the sons, but God knows how to preserve that one seed. And we go, and we go a little further. And the Bible says, and I know I'm jumping ahead, but the, the, the Bible said that there was a, a queen by the name, I want to say, Athaliah. The Bible said that she comes along and she's wanting to keep her son on the throne because she's controlling him. But God says, I've got a royal seed, Josiah. And that royal seed is just a baby. And the Bible said when she goes around killing all the sons of, uh, 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 of the royal seed, that the nursemaid began to pick that baby up. And she run and she hid him for seven years. And why? Because they thought they destroyed it. Every time God gets ready to move, there is a great move of death everywhere. And I don't know about you, but everywhere we're going, we're hearing words of death. But God says, I'm raising up a royal seed that has a seed and a word of life that's going to teach you how to live, not teach you how to die. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible said, and we and I'm going to jump ahead real quick. The Bible said, when Jesus was born, what happened? Herod said, we got to get rid of everybody uh, 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 that, that's born uh, of this age of this child. And they killed all the young men, the young children of Israel, the boy babies. But God preserved the seed. I'm here to tell you, we're now at the change of an order once again, ladies and gentlemen. There is a change of an order. And everywhere you go, we see these sons that they know the Lord, but they followed after after strange gods and they followed after this doctrine and that doctrine and this thing and that thing and yet in the midst of it all it looks like the enemy has scattered the royal seed but I'm here to tell you God has got a royal seed that he's preserved in himself and we are not our own we have no say in the matter that's why he's directing our steps in the weirdest craziest places we find ourselves and we don't understand what's going on but God said I've done this thing now here in Joel 2, oh, there we are. I want to, and this is a great thing. I'm going to get through this tonight to save a, a little a, a time. Uh, and, and I know, I, I, that's, yeah, King James, blow ye the trumpet in Zion and so forth and so on. And, and I like what, what one translation put it this way. When you read the, 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 the first verse, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Uh, another way of putting that is order in the court. Another way to put that disorder in the court. How many knows when the judge says order in the court, there ain't no back talk. There ain't no telling what you think. Oh, come on now. 
We wonder why we spend the night in God's jail because we run in our mouth when he says order in the court. And I'll leave that alone for a better day. <laughs> I mean, that'll preach all night long, but I want to get ahead here a little bit. Uh, I, I, want us, I want us to look at... Uh, I want us to look at verse 3. Well, let's look at verse 2. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, and and uh, look here, a great people and a strong people. Now, now the, the church world per se calls this the first fruit company. And, and no doubt it is. Because when you begin to read the things that's been ascribed to this group of people, that there's been nobody like them before or after. What a great, great group of people. And you can read on down. We can go down. Uh, and, and I want to I come back here to, to this verse 3, in the, fi- the first part of verse 3 here, where it talks about that a fire uh, devours before them, behind them a flame burneth. Uh, the, la- the land is as a garden of Eden before them in a desolate wilderness, and nothing shall escape them. Uh, And then it talks about, verse 4, the appearance of the horse. And it gives all these wonderful, wonderful things about this, what we call the first fruit company. And I believe in a first fruit company. But tonight, I'm not talking to you about the first fruit company. Because I don't believe the first fruit company is sitting here tonight. I believe there's something else going on. Here we go. Are we ready? Verse 3. There we are. What did God say? I'm making my ministers flames. There's something that's going ahead of this first fruit company. There's a group of men and women that God chose in himself before the foundation of the world that he says, I've got some things to accomplish. Now, as I started off talking earlier tonight about when the children of Israel got ready to cross over the river Jordan. And the word of the Lord came to a a select few. Now, I want to deal with this just for a moment. There were, uh, depending on which historian you want to look at, there were 24 courses of priests in the Levitical priestly tribe. And each of them, each of these courses, they had their job. Some of them cleaned the tabernacle. They carried the ashes out. Some of them were the musicians. Some were singers. Some did this. and They all had their... Their, their jobs, if you please, that they would do in the course of their duties all the time. But there was one little group called the Kohathites. They were the ones appointed by God uh, through Moses to be the ones that carried the ark up on their shoulders. God said it's not to be carried by anybody except these guys. Now understand something. When you were born a Kohathite, you had your uh, uh, future mapped out for you. You were going to shoulder the load, the responsibility of that glory. And, and you didn't apply for the job. You, you couldn't be out of the tribe of Judah and say, you know what? I really like carrying that ark. I think I'll give it a shot. It didn't work that way. You were appointed by God. Can I tell you something? God has already appointed those in His His uh, uh, orchestra, if you please. There are those that can sing. Have you ever noticed there are some people can stand up and open their mouth and sing one note and the glory falls? Can I, can I tell you something? I see those priests, they're the ones uh, that, that they can hit a note on the keyboard here and the glory just fill the place. There are those that it may be a quote of Scripture. There's those that can do this and do that. But then the ones that God says, you are the ones that I place this heavy load upon your shoulders. Who were these Kohathites? Well, for 40 long years, everybody's marching around in the wilderness. Everybody's living their dream. Everybody's doing what they want to do. Everybody's raising kids and they're having families and they're doing their thing. And and here is this one little group of people. They're feeling the heavy weight of that golden box. Now, you can get into the dimensions of the Ark of the Covenant. And it's so... So long and so wide and so deep. It was made out of acacia wood. It was covered in and out with gold. The Bible doesn't say how thick it was. Had staves on it that was covered in gold. I I don't know how much it was, but I do know this much about gold. It's heavy. And so here we've got these priests that are feeling the weight all through the desert their entire lives. Now please understand something. These were men and women that, that for their entire life. Now who are you talking about? They didn't know Egypt. Remember the Egypt people? 
They grumbled and griped. What happened? They died. So God says, I'm going to raise up a whole new generation of people that never knew Egypt. Joshua and Caleb, the only two that come out that ever knew Egypt. Because Moses died. So now, who are these? These are men and women. I call them wilderness babies. All they knew is wilderness stuff. They didn't know anything else. They're feeling the weight of this thing for 40 long years. All they did was carry this heavy weight upon their shoulders while everybody's dancing and singing and having a grand old time. They're feeling the weight and the responsibility of the glory of God. I'm looking at some people of the priest of the Lord tonight. Amen. While you've got family members, I, I, I'll just tell this real quick. I, 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 uh, I, I come out of the old Pentecostal background and uh, I, 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 I know that, that, that there's many times my mom and him would say, son, what's wrong with you? Your brothers, they're living a normal life. Their kids are normal. I still hadn't figured out, Brother Sammy, what normal means, but. And, and what's so bad is you got no answer. It's because you have been have placed on your shoulders that weight of the glory of God, and it directs your life, whether you like it or not. And God says, This is what I'm doing. I'm making you a flame of fire, and you're going to go ahead. That's why I'm changing the order. That's why things are different than they've ever been before, ladies and gentlemen. We're feeling a shift in the heavens we've never felt before. Amen. What used to do it for us, don't do it anymore. What used to work for us, don't do it anymore. That, that, and there, there's so many times that Dennis and I'll be talking, uh, we'll be talking about preaching or going into a service. You got so I got nothing. I'm blank. And, I, and we go into this stuff. Why? Because God. God says to tell us we're walking into a place where our total sufficiency is of the Lord. Amen. The stuff you thought you had prepared from yesterday now has worms in it and that manna is no good. God says, I've got some fresh manna for you. i got something I want to give you that will bring you life that will allow you to cross over into the fullness of this thing. Now here's the thing, amen, while, while everybody else has been walking and dancing and singing and having a grand old time, there's a handful that's feeling the weight of this thing upon their shoulders. And now we all, all stand at the river Jordan and we're ready to cross over into everything God's promised for us. Can I tell you something? Paul wrote, I think it's in the 8th uh, chapter of Romans, he said, the whole creation groaneth, and not just them, but we also groan, waiting to wit, King James says, which means to witness. Is this all right? Amen. We want to witness something. What? The fullness of this thing. The creation is groaning. Can I tell you something? I don't care what your background is. You can be Hindu. You, 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 can, you can be any kind of Christian denomination you want to be. Every creation, every piece of creation on this planet is feeling the same exact thing. How you express your feeling depends on your beliefs and your doctrines and how you were raised. You go out here to the traditional churches, 99% of them will express what they're feeling by saying, Jesus is coming any minute. That's what they say. Why? Because that's, that's what they feel. That's what they were taught. This feeling that I have says anticipation, groaning. He's coming any minute. But if you talk to somebody that's a Hindu, they'll say, what I feel it is, I'm about to come into karma. Same feeling, but they're expressing it different. And you can go into Confucianism or, or all the other religions of the world. It doesn't matter. They will express the fullness or whatever their enlightenment is according to their beliefs. Amen? We're all feeling that. Paul said the whole creation groans. Waiting for what? A manifestation. Somebody to walk this thing out. Enough talk. Let's walk. Oh, hallelujah. Here's the problem. Nobody can walk except the ones carrying the ark. Oh, help me, God. Some of y'all said, I didn't come to hear this tonight. <laughs> is this all right? Is it making sense? Please understand, this is where all creation is. We're spread out along the banks of the River Jordan. We can see it. We can feel it. But the thing that brings the change 
is only to those that carry the ark. He said, you tell them to carry the ark. Walk. Take a step. If you'll take a step, I'll do something for you I will not do for anybody else. There is laid up unto you, Paul said, a dispensation of the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. There's been something, Millie, that he's put on me I can't get rid of. I can't pray it away. I can't fast it away. I can't dance it away. He put it there, and it's for his glory. And therefore, I must take a step. When I'm scared to death, I still have to, oh my God. The Bible says, Jordan overflowed its banks. Please understand, that wasn't a tiny trickle of water. Honey, that was a raging river. And if you stepped into it, you would be sucked under and you'd die. And they all knew it. The Word of the Lord says, if you've if you got the ark on your shoulder, if you got the ark on your shoulder, you better hear me. Take a step. Take a step. Take a step. But, but God, you don't know what I've been through. Take a step. But God... Take a step. But I'm scared. You don't understand. Take a step. This word is to you. Take a step. Oh, hallelujah. We got to walk where nobody's ever walked before, Brother Clifton. Amen. We got to walk in some places and we got to manifest some stuff. Why? I'm fixing to get to the rest of the story and you'll see what I'm talking about. But right now, understand. Everybody, they're all gathered along the banks of the river. Everybody's gathered. Everybody's gathered. Everybody's gathered. They're excited. You know, and, 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 and I always thought it was interesting. Amen. When, when, when they're getting ready to cross uh, 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 the, the Jordan River, everybody thinks it's like the big Oklahoma land rush. Somebody going to shoot a gun off and we're... Everybody, everybody, nothing but shoe soles disappearing into the dust. It don't work that way. Not in God's economy. Is this all right? He said, you tell them. You see, that the fear of that raging river held them all at bay. Even the priest. Bless God, I'm a priest. I know this word. I've been to all the conventions and got all the CDs. God says, not good enough. If you, don't, if you don't feel the weight of that golden box on your shoulder, this is not to you. And it won't make a bit of sense to you. And the fear of that river will stop you from walking. Lo and behold, He said, you tell them that bear the ark, put their foot in. If they'll put their foot in that river, I will roll back the river Jordan all the way back to the city of Adam. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh hallelujah. He said, this is what I'm talking about right here. Oh, hallelujah. This, they all, please understand, they all, they all heard the same word. But the word was not to everybody. That's why there's some sitting in the pews tonight and this place isn't jam-packed full of people. Because God says, you heard the word. There's a weight on your shoulders that begin to beckon and call. Oh, Jesus. I didn't want to preach this, but I will anyway. Every time God's people got in bondage, every time, every time God's people got in bondage, the enemy would scatter them because he didn't want them uniting. Okay? The priest had to find other means to survive. Some would, would become shepherds. Some would become carpenters, some goldsmiths, silversmiths. They, they, some became farmers. They would, they would all have to find different jobs because they couldn't work in the temple anymore because the temple would be destroyed or because things would happen and they, 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 their, their conquering enemy would not allow them to function because they didn't want them serving their God. But when God got ready, whether it be months or years, when God got ready to bring them out of bondage, the high priest would hear a word from the Lord and he would blow a trumpet. Come on. And when he would blow that trumpet, it was only for the sounds of the priest. Only for their ears. Everybody could hear that same trumpet blowing, but it meant nothing to them except to the priest. And if they were in the field, if they were building a house, if they were working in the, the, the shops of shopkeepers of some, whatever they were hearing, whatever they were doing, they would hear that sound they would lay down whatever they were doing and begin their march towards the temple. 
Because they knew God was restoring Israel. Is this all right? That's why we're hearing something tonight in the Spirit that made us even want to come. Is this all right? Because there's, there's a lot of people that knows and yet only a handful come. That's the way God works. I learned years ago, I, if I have a big crowd, I get scared. I, I get stage fright. But God says, all right, here we go. This word, put your foot in the river. Now, now here they go. I can see them now. This weight of this box, I, if, I were that, if I were that lead priest and I got that thing on my shoulder, I'd be thinking, there ain't no way I can swim in this thing on my back. <laughs> there ain't no way I can barely swim anyway, much less with this thing on my back. But as he puts his foot in the river, suddenly the water began to boil and roll back. The Bible said it became dry ground. Now the word of the Lord, the same word of the Lord, the same word of the Lord, the same word that says put your foot in it and I'll roll back death is the same word that says only go halfway over. Oh my. Oh my. Like we were reading here, there's a flame that goes before them. Before them is as the Garden of Eden. But there is this priestly order that has to go ahead of the first fruit company. God's requiring some trailblazers in the, in the Spirit. Who are the trailblazers? Isn't it, nice, isn't it nice to either drive or walk down some of these nice little roads where they've got it all landscaped? It's all pretty and nice. If you'd have gone back a few hundred years... Wouldn't have been so pretty. Thorns and thistles and God knows what else growing. Huh? The trailblazers deal with stuff. That's why some of us sitting here even tonight, you've had to deal with some things in your life that somebody else hadn't had to deal with. Trailblazers, a flame. The flame goes before them. The flames were the one that put their foot in the river and let it roll back. And then that, 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 that first fruit company, the children of Israel, they can pass over. Why? Because you're not allowed to go all the way over. Your job is to hold back death so that they can be healed and delivered. I, I've made this statement a lot of times. I said, you know, it's a good thing I wasn't there then. After carrying that heavy box around for 40 years, if I'd have seen that river roll back, I'd have said, adio, see you on the other side. God says, wait a minute, you can only go halfway. I said, I'll, I'll get to the other side. I'll pray for you. <laughs> but I wanted, I wanted to get to one other thing here before I let Dennis have it. Uh, I want to go down to, and I'm having to find it on this little bitty tiny thing here. And you can read all this, you know, all these other verses that come after this. It talks about what a wonderful uh, attributes are given to the first fruit company, how powerful and, and, and wonderful they are. Uh, uh, but, I, well, you have to excuse me while this thing jumps around. I can't figure it out half the time anyway. I want to talk to you about the, the, the locust. Where, what, what verse is that? Somebody might want to help me. Uh, it's towards the end somewhere. Uh, here we go. Anybody found it yet? I'm trying to get you help here. Oh, help them, Jesus. No, no. Uh, chapter nine. Chapter nine. Uh, uh, well, no, this was in the same chapter two. It talks, oh, here it is, verse 25. There it is. Sorry about that. Joel 225. Because I want us to see this. I want us to see this. Verse 25. This, and I and and and, and I begin to see this as never before. Because I want you to understand. I want you to understand that 
we live and minister under a different set of rules than anything else. Not that we're better or smarter or more anointed or more anything. It's just that God chose this. He said, when you put your foot in the river, I'm doing this not for you. You're the only one, you're the only one of this bunch that has the power over death. And if you'll put your foot in the river, everybody can be delivered because of you and your faithfulness. And because, you know, usually, usually our prayers are about us four and no more. God, help me, help me take care of my kids, my grandkids, my health, my job, my this, my, amen. But it, when, when you get the understanding of a Melchizedek priesthood, it's no longer about you. It's about his creation. And, and Oh, God, help me. I, this thing's exploding on me. It's like this. Joseph could not minister to his own house until he first ministered to the house of Egypt, his enemies. Amen? Come on now. The ones that had him in prison, had him locked up. God had to raise him up. He had to fill their storehouses. He had to teach them how to survive. And then when the famine hit, for two years of the famine, he had to feed them with no promise of nothing. The Bible says that one day his, his, he looks down his brothers are there, kneeling before him. The Bible says, then Joseph remembered the dream. It wasn't like he had a little promise uh, uh, in his pocket he could read all them years. Hang on, Joseph. God's going to get you out of this, buddy. Just hang on. No. You ever, you ever been in something so long you just forgot God was going to ever get you out? Didn't think he was ever going to show up. Joseph forgot. And he could not minister to his own house, his own brothers, his own family, till first he had the same love for the enemy. Man, that goes against everything I like. Now, I know y'all are holier than I am, but I have trouble with that. Now, let me get on with this. God says, I'm going to restore, watch this, the years, not your stuff. <laughs> Well, God, I worked really hard, and, and you see my stuff is gone. I used to have a beautiful home. My stuff is gone. I used to have a good job. My stuff is gone. God said, I didn't say a thing about your stuff. I'm restoring the years. Hmm. Now, I want you to see this. I will restore to you the years, and here's what is so interesting. I want you to watch this. That the locust hath, hath eaten. Now, if you look that up in the ancient Hebrew, it, it basically means a grasshopper in a short yeah. word there. Okay? But watch this. The locust hath eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the pommel worm. Yeah, Ain't the devil. That's right. Come on, Ain't your mother-in-law. <laughs> My army. God says... You wonder what messed with you in your whole life? I've done this thing. Now, I got into a study of these because I don't know one thing from another to begin with. So I got into a study of the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the pommel worm. You know what it means in ancient Hebrew? They're all the locusts. You know what the difference is? They're different stages of the locust's life. God began to speak to me. And He said, My army... I've messed with you in your spirit, your soul, and your body. And I'm going to restore all of that to you. Oh, God. My great army. I'm in the process of restoring this. Why? Because you're my flames of fire. If you don't do what God's called you to do, the children of Israel are stuck out in the wilderness. You got to walk where nobody else has walked. You got to put your foot in this thing. You got to chant something and do it. Well, I'm not comfortable doing that. I've never done that before. I wonder what the Hebrew is. I wonder what the Greek is. I don't know. Put your foot in the water. Amen. He said, You're going to have to let go of some things of yesterday. Yes. You got to let go of some things. But, 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 but God. That's my identity. No, it isn't. Your identity is in God. Therefore, if any man be... Oh, nobody wants to help me here. In 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? 
new creature. How many things are passed away? And we know what that means in the Greek. <laughs> All things are passed away. And that word new creation. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That word new creature, those two words in the Greek, the ancient Greek, means a species never having before existed. You don't have a past. Stop saying your mama made you do that. Or your grandpa, or your daddy was that way. Or you're that, oh God help me, I done lost my amens. Come on, am I telling you all the truth? I can't help it, I got my temper from my daddy. No, you didn't. You're just a heathen. Say amen, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy's my buddy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Old things have passed away. Everything you can claim as your own is gone. Oh, I'm going to try to quit with this, but I want you to hear this. The, you know, it, when, when the priest would get ready to go. See, see, our journey, whether or not you realize this or not, we're on a journey. And I'm not talking about some glad morning, but we're on a journey. We're on a journey into the manifested fullness of God. So that as He is, so are we in this present world. Oh, my God. And the Bible says that the high priest would come into the outer court. Anybody could come into the outer court. Whosoever will, let him come. But to make the next step, you had to be a Levite. Amen? Had to be a priest. Had to be born a Levite. But now that's as far as we can go to lay claim to anything we've ever done. The Lord dealt with me on this some time back. He said, we are now in a place where, our, if you please, our nose is against the veil and we're ready to make that next transition into behind the veil into the third dimension, if you please, or the Holy of Holies, where only the manifested presence of God is. God didn't say, I'll show up anywhere except behind the veil. God didn't say, isn't that what he said? He said, he said, I want you to make the, I want you to make the ark. Read, read it for yourself. The Bible said, he said, I want you to make the ark so big, so wide, so deep, covered in and out with gold, put the staves in it, put it in behind the veil. And God said, there will I meet with thee. You don't find God meeting with you anywhere except there. And if you meet with God, that's where you are. Oh, hello. But here's the promise. Here's, here's the problem with that whole thing. The high priest, the high priest, his birthright, his training, his understanding, everything about him brought him up against the veil. Nothing that he could lay claim to allowed him to cross over into the presence of God. On the day of atonement, he would stand there with a bucket of blood in one hand and a bucket of incense in the other. Oh God, I don't want to get into this tonight. The Bible says... That he would stand there. And according to their history and their legends, he would stand there. And according to their laws, he could not sit down, either one of them, to see the veil was seamless. Amen? He couldn't go around it, couldn't go under it, couldn't go over it. That's what the Bible says. So how did he get to the other side? According to them and their history. The high priest was standing there. He could not, this blood and this incense was not allowed to touch the earth. Can I tell you something? All that God is can never be polluted. Huh. He would stand there waiting. Waiting for what? See, the, God didn't stay behind the veil all the time. Behind the veil in the Holy of Holies, it stayed dark all the time until God showed up. When that presence showed up above the mercy seat, it would light up the room and it would flow, the light would flow through that translucent veil into the next dimension. And that high priest would stand there until God showed up above the mercy seat. When he showed up above the mercy seat, the glory and the power of God would translate that high priest through the veil into that presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing that man did prepared him to make this transition. Can I tell you something, people? Everything we've learned, every revelation, every doctrine, everything we learn has not prepared us enough to make this transition. We can only stand available waiting on the manifestation of God to pull us through this thing and let us stand in the glory of God. 
But as we stand, the high priest did not stand for himself. The Bible said before he even stood there, he first offered for himself and then for Israel. Everything he did was on behalf of Israel. Oh, is this making any sense? This is where we are, folks. There's a high priestly order that says, hey, everything I brought you through, I brought you through not for yourself, but I've done it for my people, my creation. I used to say it this way. There is nothing that God won't do to you for somebody else. Come on now. Acts 16. God, God got Paul and Silas and beat them up and put them in prison. Why? Because the jailer needed to be saved. I said, God, can we give him a track or something? You don't have to beat me up, God. I'll invite him to church. But we could go through this all day long. But I wanted us to, to be encouraged because God's doing some great things in our midst. And he, He's changing the order. You can feel it all around us. He's changing the order. And there are those that He's connecting us with. He's connecting us with this one and that one. I'm talking about in a bond that's beyond our own understanding. Heart to heart. And He's doing this because He said, guess what? You're fixing to take a step where nobody else has stepped before. I'm going to make you walk in some places nobody's walked before. Nobody had ever stepped in that river and rolled it back. It was only by God's divine order. Change of this thing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. I'm, I'm done. Dennis, come on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is that not good? Wonderful, wonderful. Amen. You know, I want to really encourage you something here tonight. Realize who you are. You know, God has never done anything except through people. This new manifestation is not going to come any other way. You know, if you're looking for something out of the atmosphere to happen, something to float down, it's not going to happen. God is preparing a people. You know, I said something in Tennessee the, the, the last time I was down there, and Gary just really hit on it when he spoke this right here. My great army, which I sent among you. And I said this, and, I, and, I, and it really is coming true. I said this in Tennessee the last time I was there, and, I, and it was this. I said, God is fixing to get rid of every great preacher we've ever known. Amen. Do you remember me? I mean, I don't know if y'all listened to that sermon. Yeah. But, and I said, He's fixing to bring a preacher among us that we don't know. And it's that preacher right there. It's that preacher right there that's going to preach to you like you've never been preached to before and you're not going to recognize him because he's not going to show up with smooth words to tell you. He's going to show up and preach in your circumstances to you. Can you hear that? That's a truth. Now listen, I really want you to get a hold of this because I think it's so urgent in this day that we understand what God is saying. If you miss this right here, you're going to miss what God is saying. Because God has been preaching to us for years, not in a pulpit, but in the circumstances that He's sending into your life, preaching to you. Amen? Now who in the world, we have been afraid that the River Jordan is running over its banks, like Gary said. We have been so scared to tell the people of God that this is God. And the reason we've been so afraid to tell them because the river's running over, they got more problems than they can handle, and I'm going to tell them that that's God in your life? There's no other way to get through them. There's no other way to deliver creation except to tell them the truth. Let me tell you, God just spoke something recently to me, Clifton. He said, when you see a man's ox in the ditch, do you leave him there? Come on, think about that a minute. How many people's oxes have we seen in the ditch and we left them there? How do you leave them there? You tell them, honey, it's going to be all right. 
I'll pray for you. Are you that you know God, God's going to change all that? Now God's put you in the ditch for a reason. And it's up to me to tell you the truth, to tell the ox, watch, if I told my daughter when she was in the ditch, everything was going to be okay, instead of standing up and telling her, listen, you're going to have to change. This is all happening to you because of this. Or I could have left her in the ditch. And I could have gave her a bunch of preaching words. Sermons. That felt good. That would have left her in the ditch. Amen? Or I could have got down in the ditch and told her, hey, look, there's a way out of this ditch. You know? You're in this ditch for a reason. And that's what we got to be... This is the priest of the day It's coming that's going to preach this. Because this is the only thing that's going to set creation free. Our revelations, our great knowledge ain't going to say it. If it would have done it, we'd fill the earth with revelation. More, you can read more revelations all day long. The internet's full of them. People's got books everywhere. You can read all about revelations and get revelation after revelation after revelation. But I'm telling you what, when you step into this right here, it's going to set creation free. Amen. It's going to be a word that we've never heard. I want to speak just a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of time. Is that all right? Uh, what's her name? No, the, your dog. Who? Daisy. Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Daisy, could, do you have NIV? Can you go to uh, Judges chapter 13, verse 17? I want, to read a, I want to read something to you here. If she can't get it, I got it on my phone. It's just a real short verse. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I'm really not. But this, is, this scripture right here, God quickened to me. And I mean, it has really challenged me. Right here. And I'm probably Manoah. That's the way I pronounce it. This is talking about the birth of Samson. Samson's mother had just had a... Uh, what am I trying to say here? A visitation from a ministry of the Lord. She'd been barren up to this point. And he tells her now that she's fixing to have a child. Sounds familiar? Like Mary, the mother of Jesus. I mean, you know that everything in Scripture from Genesis all the way to Revelations is just simply foreshadowing the Christ. Amen? Now, she goes and tells her husband, Manah, Manoah, and he's going to inquire of this message. He's interested enough to know because this is beyond his understanding. This is something he can't cope with. He can't understand. You ever been there? And Manoah inquired of the angel of the Lord, what is your name? We all know what name is, right? What's your character? What's, 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 what's the nature of your message? Amen? So that we may honor you when your word comes true. He replied, the messenger, why do you ask my name? It is beyond understanding. Think about that a minute. Where are we at right now? Is that not a true word for where we're at right now? This is where we're standing right now. We are being visited by a message that is beyond our understanding. Oh, glory to God. Man, I'll tell you what, that went off in my spirit like a bomb. And I thought, wow, what a day that we're standing in. Because see, listen, it's not beyond God's understanding. It's beyond ours. And God has to bring us to that point 
in our life so that we will begin to stand in Him. This is where we have to stand, people. Now, he takes it to another word. When he goes on down, he is born exactly the way that this message, this nature told him to. It was something that she was going to give birth to that her and her husband could not understand. We are fixing to give birth. We are standing on the brink of a birth that we do not understand, but it's the power and the anointing of God to lead into this next arena. Amen? Now, I love this. I, I, I've always been fascinated by Samson. There's not a razor supposed to touch his hair. We realize that's his strength, that's his anointing, right? He'd be a Nazareth from his birth. He's dedicated totally to God, right? Now, the first time that he comes in counter with the army against Israel is against what? 900? Is it 900 or 1,000? That he slays with the jawbone of that he slays with the jawbone of an ass. Think about that for a minute. I got to really getting really interested in that, Gary, because I don't know. I'm a. I, I know God does don't write stuff to write it. And I looked that up in the ancient Hebrew, and it went off in my spirit like a bomb. And this is what I want to share with you. Here's this nature that we do not understand. It's beyond our understanding. Here's a man standing, being able to slay 10,000 problems. A situation, just like Gary talked about, standing on the brick of Jordan. You know, think about that. It's at flood stage. Is this world right now that we're standing in is not in flood stage? You know, there's got to be a priest that's going to be able to step. There's a Samson that can slay with a jawbone. It's going to be really interesting when I tell you about this jawbone. You know what this jawbone means in the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew? It means an inner word coming forth out of the jaw. Wow. An inner word. It said a very inner word, what it represented. What Samson was slaying with was an inner word that was birthed in him from his birth beyond understanding of anybody that came forth without of him. What? A word coming forth out of the jawbone of a human. Oh, glory to God. Can you hear what I'm trying to say? There's a priest today that's got a word in them deep inside their reservoir that's coming forth out of their jaw that is able to set, able to set them free is because they have bared this thing for years and years and has not understood it, but now understanding is beginning to come through the things of God. Man, I don't know about y'all, but that's the way it comes. It's not coming any other way. So people, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not against books or reading. But it's time for us to truly get a hold of God beyond all men's understanding. Beyond our understanding. Beyond Preston's understanding. Elwin's understanding. My understanding. And us hear what thus saith God is saying. Amen. A true word coming forth out of the jawbone of this ass. Oh, glory, can you hear me? Amen. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I wanted to share that with you. I believe it's so crucial. I believe it's so crucial. I, I, this is, I, I, I see a priest today standing, Gary. I, when you were ministering, I could see that priest standing. And I've seen the people that God's gathering. And it's a people that's not afraid. Hey, we've already lost everything. You can't take nothing from us. You hear me? I ain't got no reputation I got to protect. It's done gone. Brother Don and I have been Canada said, I destroyed his church. Well, welcome to me. God destroyed me. but I cannot speak nothing but truth. I'm not going to sit 
all my life and watch your ox in a ditch and not tell you the truth. Amen. It's the truth that makes us free. Amen. As we leave here tonight, I think this meeting was very crucial. I was just thinking, I, 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 I get a lot of revelations walking up Jackson Mountain, people. Now, don't go up there and be like Brother Evie said one time. He said, you know, he said, boy, I was watching all these big camp meetings, you know. And he said, boy, I see all these healing campaigns and I was just a young minister. And Brother Evie said, you know, he said, boy, I thought, he said, I think it was Oral Roberts that came close to his town. And he said, I didn't get to make another meetings, but he said, I thought, man, surely there's some of that still left out there, you know, all that healing and all that. And he said, I went out there and thought I'd kind of bathe in it a little bit. And he said, I got out there and there was nothing but sawdust. <laughs> the glory lamp. <laughs> but as I was walking today, I was walking up the mountain and I was talking to Clifton and Lord just really prepped me to have this meeting here. I don't do nothing for no reason. I've really... I've really tried to make that a part of my life, that what I do has life-changing impact on stuff. And uh, as I was walking up the mountain, I, I was thinking, me and, my, me and my son's trying to on deal started because I'm trying to come out of work and I, I kind of like to have something to do but not something to type. If I just started here and had this earlier and if I'd got over here and know these people and got all this started this earlier and all this and I was sitting there and all of a sudden God just said, would you shut up? And I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, you're sitting here telling me about how to operate and all these things, and I'm the operator of everything. Well, I had to fall in repentance. I, I did. I think like sometimes he's the last resort that we seek. And he should be our first. And then everything else it says what? Will line up. Seek ye first. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's been a pleasure being with you tonight. And I hope uh, Gary, wonderful word. If anybody has an offering for Gary, I'd I suggest you to give him give him one tonight. And it's such an honor. I want my daughter to come here just for a minute, just just for a second. She she has. Uh, come so far. And she has a little bit of things she wants to share with you. I know in my heart, I've just recently. And it's, it's, it's an honor to be a part of that. Amen. I really do. And I bless y'all and honor y'all. And I strengthen you, hon. I know you feel like you're, you don't do everything you ought to be doing in God. But God has you right where He wants you, hon. Hear me? God's doing His own purpose and His own work in you. And you just allow Him to do that. And you don't feel guilty about it. I, I the guilt out of your mind, huh? I say guilt in your mind. And I just, I, I, I relieve you of that. There's no guilt. God's got you exactly where you want. And you quit beating yourself up over that. You hear me? God bless you. I love you and honor you. Amen. Amen. Come here, buddy. I want my daughter to end it. Just end it. Shut down. But just share in your heart. Right? It's funny then that to Rachel because like I was laying down taking a nap today. What well, wasn't saying that I'm my worst critic. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, people really aren't mean to me. It's me. I'm mean to myself. And, you know, God just kept saying over and over in my mind, love conquers all and be nice to yourself. Love conquers all and be nice to yourself. And it just felt really good because I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not nice to myself because I have so much guilt, you know. And like God has, you know, con completely taken my guilt away and then I'll grab it back. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I just like the pain of it or what. <laughs> but, um. You know, he, God's been dealing with me in my life and in my circumstances, and he's put people around me that, you know, some people that I feel, you know, have been through the same thing as me and, and can relate to me. And then he's got people that around me that really rub me the wrong way. And it's really caught me, you know, put me into check with myself.
Because usually I've realized this, that if I ever have a problem with someone, it's usually a problem in myself. It's really not that person at all. It's something that needs to be dealt with in me. It's something that needs to be dealt with in me. And so, you know, God's really had me in that situation and, and really been working with me lately just on my thought processes and the way I view people and the way I view myself. And, and it's, it's been, it's really neat because it's, it's the transformation. I can just see the transformation taking place. And I, I finally got a new car. Well, it's not brand new, <laughs> but it's new to me. <laughs> and that is a huge step for me because I've, you know, I came from, I've lost everything and you guys pretty much know that and God's given me what I'm needing and he's taken those things away, but he's replacing it with what I'm needing. And so I just love you guys, and I, I thank you for this meeting. I, I've, I needed it, and I just I love you guys. And Clifton, you want to come on up? I just want to share uh, in closing. Uh, there was a word that I received uh, yesterday. A woman was getting, she was getting ready to uh, pass or uh, die. And uh, uh, when we got there, she, she looked like she was very much alive and looked like she was doing better than, you know, we were when we got there. But she wanted uh, just to ask if, you know, if I could do her funeral when the time really did come. And uh, <clears throat> what, what was so unique about this, her husband called us into his office. And uh, <clears throat> he said, I want to speak to you, to y'all a little bit. But this man opened up unto me in, uh, he be, in, 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 our, in our language. And he, I've never, I've never been prophesied to by my very own language. But yesterday, I seen it take place. And, and this man said, uh, we are the temple of God. Clifton, you are the temple of God. And he said, uh, inside of this temple, the creator comes to live inside of you, Clifton. And he said, there's something that our people have forgotten. And in, in, in my language, we say, I thought they think. That means love. I thought it's gone, he said, in our culture. In what we need to understand of our, the temple of God, he said, you love those that are not born yet. And then you also love those that are already here. And you also love those that have crossed over. Yeah. And I was walking inside the house before church this morning, Gary, and it dawned on me. This man was telling me about a love that only the Creator has. Yes. Unlimited. Yes. And, and, he, he, and he told me, he said, if you stay with that love and keep it in this temple, you will be not lacking anything. Amen. You will you will receive energy. God will strengthen you to accomplish what He has for you to do. Yes. And that and that is so unique because we all need strength. We all need energy. We all need a little jump or boost to come up to the next level that God has for us. And he said, but if you drift away, Clifton, if you drift away from this house, you're going to find yourself, your heart is no longer pure. 